Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is our fourth video on logic app topic. Today in this particular video, we'll discuss the difference between the workflow types, which is a stateless and a stateful workflow. What are the differences we have between these two different type of workflows, which we can create with the standard logic app. With, with this video, you'll be able to make a decision in which particular business case or scenario which you should be choosing the stateful versus the stateless workflow. Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanshi and you are watching Be A Learner. As you can see here on my screen right now, I have a standard logic app and here I have created two workflows. One is a stateful workflow. The name I have given as a stateful, you can give any name. And the second workflow I have is the stateless workflow. Possible that one logic app could have combination of stateful or stateless workflow. I wish Microsoft Azure logic app UI could have the another column here on this particular grid, which says the type of the workflow, which unfortunately at the moment it doesn't say that. But anyways, let's first of all understand the difference or very first difference between the stateful and stateless. So the stateful workflows actually stores the state or the history onto the storage account. So remember when we created the logic app, standard logic app, it, it did ask to provide the name of the storage account. So that's the storage account which it will be using to store our all the workflow history or the tracing of that particular workflow run. So you can find that entire run history and that will be available for the life uh, for the long, long period time uh, for uh, any individual workflow which you are running. Whereas with the stateless workflow, it doesn't actually stores the history of that run or the logs into the any persistent storage. So what it does is it runs in memory. So when you run this stateless workflow, it runs in memory. So you don't see any history or logs for that particular stateless workflow. And that's the reason the stateless workflow has to be run for a short duration of time. And it should run on the short messages length. So the stateless workflow is designed to execute for a lightweight message size. So as per the official documentation, the maximum allowed or the permitted size for message size for the stateless workflow is the 64 KB. Remember that. So if you have a requirement wherein your your workflow or the logic of workflow requires to process high volume of data. When I say high volume, it means the, the the message size is higher than the 64 KB, then a stateful or a stateless workflow is not a good choice to be used. Now let's look at the stateless workflow, which I have already created, which is given here. So what I'm doing here is right now, I'm creating a HTTP trigger type. So I'm saying oh, when the HTTP request receives, it basically travels the receive request body as an array because we are expecting a message to be received as in part of the array and then here i'm trying to compose that particular individual item within the array and later on i'll be sending this to the service bus message for example so let's go ahead and create a new workflow and that will give you some idea if you look at here at the screen right now you can see the history right now, right? Whereas I mentioned at the beginning that with the stateless workflow, you cannot have the history of the workflow. And whereas we can see it here, the reason for that is available because we have the debug mode enabled. So in order to temporarily work around or to investigate an issue or do the development, you can enable the debug mode with the stateless workflow. So here is the debug mode button. As you can see, it is a toggle button. It is currently it is enabled and that is the reason you can see all those histories. So if I disable that, 
then possibly you will not be able to see any kind of a history related to any other work which are going to be run after let's say 11 14 am today now if i run this workflow now just for this demonstration i'll be using this sample message the trigger is successfully completed as you can see it is 202 response which is successfully created now if i go to the monitoring view i don't have anything so even the time is 11:52, but i do not see any uh, traces of that particular run uh, so i cannot debug it so it it has to be assumed that it will uh, it's basically r running as it is functional and now if i have to basically view the actual run with the stateless workflow i have to enable the debugging now let's go back to the basics again where we'll go to the designer here you can see that this stateless workflow when when i created i'm using the trigger type as in uh, http request sometime when you set up a trigger type it by default the auto generated code uses the split on functions but unfortunately this split on function with the stateless workflow is not permittable so you have to remove that so sometime with the automation code is auto generated code it adds the split on functionality so you have to remember that as well now let's modify this particular code and we'll do one thing we'll try to add some more actions and with that action what i'm going to do is i'll send the message to another queue let's say that i have a service bus trigger which i'll be using and i would like to send whatever message i have received as an http request i'm going to send it to the send queue or the receive queue and then the body i'll say content and then i'll use this compose output body and i'll save this as is just to make sure that i want to send all my messages to the service bus body now the other thing to remember uh, the stateless versus stateful here is the trigger type so for example if i use a trigger type here let's say add an action you have the limitation with the number of triggers or uh, which you can use with the stateless uh, and stateful so it is it is uh, comparatively it is less number of uh, triggers which are available uh, with the stateless workflow let's try and test this now i'll use the run as payload and what i'll do i'll send the same message this time i'm going to send the 100 messages and that's it it's run successful let's verify the messages here with our queue i'll refresh the messages go to the peak mod i'll see if i have messages available so as you can see that we have got the messages which are showing here starting from 11 55 am and we got total 100 messages and each message is what we have sent now right this is what uh, a simplest demonstration now i would like to show you one more demonstration which is a negative scenario with the stateless workflow now for that i would like to enable the debugging mode so that we will see an error or the limitation what we have with the stateless workflow for this i am going to use the sample message which has 500 messages i'll rerun the trigger and this time my expectation here for, with this particular trigger is it should send the 500 messages let's see if it works i'll trigger that as run successful let's look at the monitoring as you can see uh, at 1158 now as we have the debug enabled we are getting the trace here and trace it is failed let's look at the reason for the failure of this particular logic app 
so it has run successfully up till this particular point we got all our 500 messages i can click here at the download and it will display all the messages and while running the loop uh, i got 500 500 messages right it is failed the reason for that is because with the stateless workflow we have a limitation that the for each loop by default can only process the maximum up to 100 messages so if you have more than 100 messages then it will fail so that's the default limitation but this particular limitation can be changed at, at the configuration level so if you are working on this tasteless workflow and if you require your logic of request to process more than 500 more than 100 records in a loop then you would have a limitation like this as well so you need to remember that as well similar to that you also have we also have a limitations on defining the variable size so let's say if i define a variable here with my workflow and if i give the variable limitation or variable length or the length of the character of that particular variable is uh, is more than uh, 100 and uh, 1024 characters then it will throw an error as well and also if we send obviously if you send a message which is more than 64 kb then it, also it will throw an error as we have already discussed now the other point to be mentioned about the stateless workflow is the stateless workflows are uh, usually runs on a synchronous pattern so you don't have the asynchronous capability to to run on this uh, stateless workflow so it is always recommended that if you have a requirement to run or process or part of a process synchronously then you can basically use the stateless workflow so the best example could be uh, you can have the startup as the state a stateful workflow as the parent workflow and from that parent workflow you can invoke a call to the stateless workflow which is making a uh, sub work or the sub part of your entire workflow which is required to be executed as a child workflow now if we have these many limitations with this stateless workflow then why would we want to use the stateless workflow the there are some reasons or benefit of using the stateless workflow uh, the one of them is it is as it is not storing the states or the uh, overall flow or not tracking the individual the, the individual runs then obviously it is going to be faster efficient to run execution time or the processing time for your workflow is going to be very very efficient whereas in this stateful it's keeping track of each and individual uh, state or the record into some some kind of a persistent storage either is sql or the storage account then it will obviously going to take time for and the other part uh, other thing is it's most of the triggers which it support is are the built-in triggers so built-in triggers are always going to be faster though we have a limitation but if you have a requirement wherein you are your uh, business process requires to implement to be implemented by using the built-in trigger then anyways it's going to be uh, cost cost efficient because it you won't require to pay any additional cost plus anyways it's going to be faster as well so these are some of the scenarios which you can make a decision which one to use or uh, whether to stateless or stateful and then you can define your business process within the logic app with the integration application i hope you have found this useful and I was able to provide you some guidance or steer to use the individual type of workflow with the logic app. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video. Bye.